Hello everyone, my name is Renee Davenport and thank you for tuning in to Save, Single and Dating. Before I begin, I want to say that the products and services that we offer are not just for women. I want to take this time to invite men to tune in as well. In order for us to get our relationships moving in the right direction, it's going to take work on both of our parts. You're going to hear me say that quite a bit in the videos. Also, I want to encourage you to check out the Safe, Single, and Dating Facebook page where we have live chats on different topics about being safe, single, and dating. And also, please, please, please join the community. Also, I want to remind you of the upcoming um, one-day dating breakthrough workshop that's coming up in January. So be on the lookout for more information on how to register for that event. Now today I just want to drop a little nugget in your lap. I always say a little nugget when uh, um, when it's things that God has given me that I didn't even go looking for. It just came, God just dropped it right in my lap. And that's what I want to share with you today. And today is going to be coming from Matthew 6. I'm going to be coming from Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 31. And I'm going to go to verse 34. Starting with verse 31, Matthew 6, 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where will shall we be clothed? For after all these things do, do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take no thought for take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thoughts for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now what I gleaned from those scriptures or what God gave me, just it just fell in my lap out of the blue. What I got out of that is in verse thirty one it says Therefore, take no thought by saying. So, we take thought by saying, Oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it. What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? So, we take thought by saying. And the reason why he said by saying, our words have power, our words have meaning, and our words set things in motion in our lives. So instead of speaking out worry, you know, it said, man shall have shall eat good by the fruits of his lips. Our tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So by saying that, what I speak out of my mouth, that I shall have or that I shall reap. So he said, take no thought by saying, O oh Lord. How many of us have said it? I know I have. What am I going to do? How am I going to make it? How am I going to pay this bill? What about this, Lord? What about that, Lord? So he said, take no thought about these things by saying. Instead, how about trying speaking the word of God over your life? Speaking the word of God over your situation. Speaking the word of God over your finances. Speaking the word of God over your family. How about speaking the word? And we know that the word has power. And we know that the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. We know the word cannot return back to God's void. It has to go out and do what God sent it out to do. In other words, the scripture says it has to accomplish what God sent it out to accomplish. The word also says, let God be the truth. Be true. Be the truth. And every man a liar. Meaning, my circumstances or what things look like. If it's contrary to the word of God, if it's contrary to the work, will of God, then it is a liar. God ain't a lie. God's word is not the liar. What I see, what I hear, what I smell, that's what's lying. <laughs> How about that? That's deep. That's God just 
drop that into my spirit just like that. So it said, take no thought by saying. Then verse 32 said, for all these things do the Gentiles see. Okay. Gentiles are unbelievers. They are, the, they are the ones that are concerned with the things of this life and the things of this world. But we as believers, we are not. He said, to set your mind on things above. You know, set your mind on these things. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honest, whatsoever is a good report. He set your mind on these things. So we set our mind on those things. We set our mind on what the Word says. We set our mind on what God is showing us. We set our mind on what God is telling us. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So what, you know, a lot of times what we'll do though, we'll look for things on the outside to validate what God has put on the inside of us. We'll look for something on the outside, something that we can see, that we can smell, that we can taste, that can confirm what God said. A lot of times you're going to find out that those things won't be there to confirm what God said. A lot of times you're going to find out they're going to probably be speaking to you the opposite. Then what are you going to do? That's where we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, God may say you are healed, but your body, you don't feel like it right now. You don't feel like you're healed right now. You know, God may say your business is going to prosper, but right now it don't look like it's going to prosper. God may say, you know, you're going to make it. I'm going to make a way for you, but you may, it, things may not look, you might be looking for validation or something to touch and agree on the outside that you can see, taste, hear, and smell, but it's not. It's not touching and agreeing with what God done said. So who is lying? Is God lying or is the word? Is God lying? Is God's word lying or the things that you see around you? It say, let God be the truth and every man a liar. I tell you when God speaks something to you, that's the truth. Whether your eyes look, whether what you're looking at is confirming it or not. What you hearing, if it's confirming it or not, I'm telling you, God's word is the truth. That I, I can think of many, many times where God spoke something to me, and the things around me wasn't lining up with what He said, and, and I'm like, God, it don't look, you know, it don't look, and I went by what it looked like, and guess what? Guess who was the liar? <laughs> Exactly. So he says in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Instead of worrying about what you don't have, and what you see, and what you hear, and what you can taste, what you can smell, what people around you may be saying to you, instead of worrying about those things, go do what God has called you to do. Go get in the field, as Ruth did. Ruth went to the field to glean. She just, it said the worst is she just happened to come across this field. No, she was led by the Spirit to that field. And you are led by the Spirit to the field that God is calling you to. If you have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive what you're seeing and hearing from the Holy Spirit today. He will lead you and guide you into all truths about Jesus. That was the scriptures, by the way. So, it says, instead, see the kingdom of heaven. So go ahead and do what God is calling you to do. Go ahead and be all that God is calling you to be. What you hear in your ear, he says, shout on the housetop. Those are scriptures, <laughs> by the way. So go ahead and be busy about, get busy doing what he's called you to do, what he's telling you to do, what he's leading you to do, what he's guiding you to do, and don't worry about all the things that are wrong and that's going on around you. Because those things will only hinder, block, and distract what God is trying to do in your life, what God is trying to do through you, what God is trying to do in this season. Amen? Because verse 34, let's look at that. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day of the evil thereof. Meaning, don't allow anything to rob or steal your today's joy, your today's peace, 
your today happiness. You know, I was thinking like, even in your thoughts, that's why you say, take no thoughts. Our thoughts can trouble us. Our thoughts can bring us problems. Uh, our thoughts can bring us things that it, that it, that's not even happening right now. We're just thinking about oh tomorrow, oh that's gonna happen, oh how did you know how I'm gonna work that out, how this is gonna work. Oh, you thinking about? And God stopped me one time. He said, "How you know you even gonna be around tomorrow? So why are you letting the things of tomorrow trouble you today and stress you out today and worry you today when you don't even know if you're gonna be here to deal with it tomorrow?" That guy did. That got deep. You know you're going to even be around to deal with that tomorrow. You got things and problems that you need to be dealing with today that you're not handling because you're worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. And one day I, I was happy. You know, things was, it was a good day. But because the thought of tomorrow was troubling me, it was robbing me of enjoying that day. Don't allow this to happen. That's why he said, take no thought about these things. Because the word also says, as a man think of in his heart, so is he. So if I'm being troubled by tomorrow's problems, which I may not even live to see them, it's stealing and robbing me from t what's going on today. What I do today, see, oh, oh, this just hit my spirit. Now I know why this happened. What I do today will affect my tomorrow. So that thing that I'm fretting tomorrow, I can deter that thing by what? Taking action today. Whew, that just fell in my spirit just then. So he said, don't take no thought for tomorrow because tomorrow is going to take thought for itself. Nothing is going to happen in each and every day that we live as a believer that God can't handle, that the God in us can't handle, that the God and the grace and the mercy that he put on the inside of us that's fresh and new every day cannot handle, that cannot help me get through. It said that grace and mercy, I can, I can come boldly to the throne of God with confidence. And find that grace and mercy in my time of need. So I don't have to worry or take thought for no day. There's enough for me to deal with. There's enough problems. There's enough situations for me to deal with today. That I don't have to worry about tomorrow's problems or troubles. And also, the nugget God just dumped in my spirit as I was talking about this. What I do today can affect what happens tomorrow. Can totally change and turn around that tomorrow if I don't allow tomorrow's problems to rob me, to distract me, to hinder me from getting done what I need to do today. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to drop that nugget into your lap today. And I pray that it will be, um, that there's something in that, uh, those passages that you can glean from that can help you along your journey today. Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day.